Hi, welcome to Government Contracting Academy's GovCon Business 101 course. As you can see, I'm not Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, or Elon Musk. I wasn't accepted to Harvard, Stanford, or MIT only to drop out and start a billion dollar company that transformed how we communicate or live. I'm not a doctor, lawyer, or any other type of professional that mothers encourage their daughters to marry. I've never been on the cover of a magazine, and you must look really hard just to find my name on the internet. If you want to be fascinated by the brilliance of an IT prodigy or a transformational leader, then this is not the program for you. You see, I'm not an innovator, thought leader, or pipe icon. I'm not a great man. My family will more than vouch for that last statement, especially when I walk past the trash can that's overflowing on trash days. However, I do like to think of myself as good enough. The fact that I'm not great represents a compelling reason why you should be excited by this program. Here's why. Despite what your mom tells you, you're probably not great either. I hate to be the one that breaks that to you, but there it is. Because I'm not great, there is a 99.999% chance that you've never heard of me. In fact, I achieved significant wealth right under the noses of my closest business colleagues, neighbors, and even extended family members without them realizing it. How could they? Quite literally, I'm like half of the people standing in line at any given Starbucks in Northern Virginia. I'm just a government contractor. I started a federal government contracting company and grew it to some level of modest success. My company entered 2010 with zero revenue and no contracts. In 2016, I sold it for eight figures. Following the sale of that company, I went on to co-own and sell multiple other federal government contracting companies. Prior to my acquisitions, I had made millions of dollars per year in profit, while people assumed that I only earned a salary of $150,000 or less. Throughout this program, I will share with you my hard-earned lessons. They will pale in magnitude when compared to the launch of Facebook or the genius and tragedy of Steve Jobs. However, my challenges are real and relevant to those of you who have a mortgage, a car payment, multiple kids, and a dog. My challenges are directly relevant to normal people. They are not the challenges of a troubled teenage genius who goes to an Ivy League school and starts an IT company from a frat house. I don't have stories about cornering a market or going global with a trail of multi-billion dollar acquisitions. I don't even know what a hostile boardroom takeover is. Instead, my story is about a terrifying realization that I wasn't on track to provide for my growing family in the way that I wanted and the journey to do something about it. It's a story about writing proposals after putting my children to bed and rushing to print and mail them during my morning commute to my real job with bloodshed eyes. The unique opportunities afforded by the federal government contracting industry enabled me to launch a company and attain financial independence without putting my family's financial well-being at risk. That's not the case with most industries. Starting a company in some industry requires detailed technical expertise or tremendous business experience. For example, inventing a new kidney a dialysis machine and taking it to market would require a mind-boggling amount of technical knowledge, business acumen, and sales expertise to be successful. In many ways, successfully launching a company like this is like qualifying for the 100-meter sprint in the Olympics. You must have no kidding natural God-given ability. You either have it or you don't. No matter how hard I trained, I would never be in the same league as an Olympic sprinter. In a race with Usain Bolt, he would be at the finish line offering me a hot dog that he bought at a concession stand as I lumber across the finish line. Launching a startup company based upon complex technology or tremendous scale is a very daunting task that should not be attempted by good people. Leave that to the incredibly gifted and very fortunate great people. But here's the good news. Starting a federal government contracting company is less like qualifying for the Olympics and more like hiking the Appalachian Trail. Both are tremendous life events. However, one relies upon superhuman ability and the other depends almost exclusively upon perseverance. If properly motivated, most people could hike the Appalachian Trail from beginning to end. What if a billionaire offered to pay millions of dollars to anybody who finished the entire Appalachian Trail? <laughs> a lot of people would be buying hiking boots and a lightweight tent. If you have the commitment to try and the grit to see it through, then you have a no kidding chance to be successful in the federal government contracting industry. 
Having just provided you this call to arms, starting a federal government contracting company requires knowledge of the industry and how to start and run a simple business. Being a good plumber does not give you the skills to be a good plumbing company owner. And that holds especially true when pursuing large federal government contracts. In fact, 95% of business executives are not willing to learn how to pursue federal government contracts. Those that do are rewarded with a massive piece of the federal government spending pie. And that's where this program comes in. Although the government has inadvertently created one of the most effective barriers to market entry in existence, the industry insider knowledge in this program will turn these barriers to your competitive advantage. These barriers will tremendously limit your competition. Once you've mastered the process to sell to the government, then it becomes a level of effort game. If you have the drive and the ability to doggedly pursue this market, then you will be successful. It's not easy, but it really is that simple. It comes down to personal initiative, a relentless work ethic, and mathematical probability. Hello, my name is Randy Wimmer, and in this course you will learn why the federal government contracting industry is ideal for aspiring entrepreneurs. We will discuss how to position your startup for market penetration. If you've already launched a company before, then you realize just how hard it is to make your first dollar as a company. However, making your first dollar is just as hard as making your first million dollars, which is just as hard as making your first $10 million. I don't have any idea how hard it is to make $100 million because I got off the carousel well before that became a possibility. But I tell entrepreneurs that making your first dollar is halfway to becoming a millionaire. And this course is designed to lay the foundation of this exciting endeavor. Before we get started, first a bit about me. I've founded, co-founded, or been an owner of various FedGov contracting companies. Sprinkled in with my entrepreneurial ventures, I've held corporate executive positions with multiple multi-billion dollar companies to include L3 and Unisys. So I've learned how to win government contracts as both a big and small business. And let me assure you that these are completely different games. On the commercial side, I've co-launched multiple social impact companies and a highly successful nonprofit organization with my sons. The first company that I founded and served as CEO was Analytic Strategies LLC, and you never forget your first. I sold the company for eight figures after winning over a quarter billion dollars in contracts in the intelligence community, the DOD logistics community, the Office of Secretary of Defense, Defense Health Agency, Sandia National Laboratories, the Chief of Naval Operations, Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, and the Department of Homeland Security. My next business venture was Secure Enterprise Analysis. It was a joint venture that I co-founded and served as managing partner. I launched this company to win contracts and new markets that Analytics Strategies would ultimately subsume. Although it was awarded contracts with a combined value of only $7 million, these contracts were in new strategic markets. For example, one of the contracts was in healthcare and directly led to a massive defense health agency contract later on. A3IS is a joint venture where I served as a partner and co-owner. A3IS was awarded nearly 70 million in federal government prime contracts in the U.S. Patent and Trade Office and the U.S. Navy. Planet Risk was the company that acquired Analytics Strategies, making me a co-owner, board director, and strategic advisor to the CEO. We ultimately split the company into Planet Risk and Planet Risk Federal Services and sold both entities in 2019 with separate acquisitions. On the commercial side, my teenage sons and I have launched two successful family-owned social impact companies and a 501c3 nonprofit organization. One of the proudest moments of my life was watching my teenage sons accept our nation's most prestigious award for volunteerism and service the President George H.W. Bush Points of Light Award on behalf of our nonprofit organization. I've led my companies to attain the ISO 9001 Quality Management System certification as well as CMMI Level 3 Process Maturity Appraisal. Less than 0.1% of U.S. companies possess either of these prestigious corporate credentials. I've also been successful competing in the federal government's Small Business Set-Aside Program. My companies have won some very large contract set-aside contracts. I mention this because most people associate small business set-aside contracts as, well, being small. Not all of them are. 
Washington Technology is the Wall Street Journal of our industry, and I've nabbed a few of their headlines showing 96.5 million, 79 million, 50 million, and $30 million contract awards. The largest small business set aside that I've personally won was worth 115 million. The largest small business set aside that I'm personally aware of was worth 200 million, and that was awarded to a colleague of mine. My companies have been honored on the Inc. Magazine's 500 Fastest Growing Companies list and the Washington Technology Magazine's Fast 50 list on multiple occasions. And I've also been invited to multiple prestigious CEO consortiums. I say all of this because these are the credentials that most people believe give me the most credibility. However, this is what I consider to be my most important qualification to teach this program. In 2003 and 2006, I failed miserably launching analytic strategies. It wasn't until my 2010 relaunch, or would that actually be its re-relaunch, that I finally figured out how to win at this game. Since then, I have done rather okay. Along this nearly eight year long journey, I stepped on nearly every landmine possible crossing the entrepreneurial minefield, and I can share where many of these mines are located and sharing what doesn't work is probably just as important, if not more so, than sharing what does. The big buzz phrase in business right now is, what's your why? As a founder, why are you launching your company? Of course, the answer for most people is money, but you can make money launching any type of company. Why did you launch this particular company? That's a fair question and I'll answer it. I've been more fortunate than I've ever deserved to be, so I founded Government Contracting Academy to help other aspiring entrepreneurs fulfill their dreams and goals in the federal government contracting industry. There's absolutely no reason why anybody should have to persevere eight years of crushing setbacks to learn this industry. I did it alone, and it was hard. Professionally speaking, it was the hardest thing that I've ever done. I launched Government Contracting Academy to not only share my hard-learned lessons and industry insights, but to also bring together like-minded aspiring entrepreneurs into a cohort where nobody's trying to do this alone and where they can create synergy helping each other. I am convinced that Government Contracting Academy can teach you how to turn the mystery of how to launch a successful company into a checklist where your success is 100% tied to your level of effort. If you want it bad enough, then you will know how to achieve your goals, but it will likely be harder than you can ever possibly imagine. So let's get started. Our first topic is course materials. With such a boring sounding topic, I know it's tempting to skip this section, but those who do will be missing out on learning some of the more beneficial aspects of this program. Think of yourself as a new student who just walked into an electrical engineering course. Wouldn't you want to know what textbook you need, or where the lab was located, or when the professor had office hours? The good news is, is that this course is nothing like electrical engineering. If this were an electrical engineering course, then I definitely wouldn't be teaching it. I had three semesters of electrical engineering to pass a two semester requirement for my undergraduate degree. You can do the math. Let's move on so I can forget my year and a half of academic pain trying to understand Ohm's Law. The most obvious component of this course is the recorded lessons. Each lesson provides a comprehensive overview of a specific business topic. As our DVRs, or if you're from my generation, those rented VCRs from Blockbuster, and yes, they used to exist, have taught us that you can stop, pause, rewind, and play again at any point in the recorded lesson. I recommend that you not only rewatch portions of a specific lesson, but that you occasionally revisit completed lessons. I work with a lot of small business owners and nearly every one of them tells me that they gain just as much insights from revisiting foundational material as they do more advanced material. Why? They say that they thought that they understood the information, but it wasn't until they had greater perspective that they truly mastered the material and its implications. Many of these lessons will have reference material and follow along activities made available through our learning management system. To help you assess your level of understanding regarding a lesson, we have optional quizzes at the end of most lessons. And finally, every other week there will be a question and answer session with a government contracting academy mentor. 
let's dive a little deeper into reference material. Through our learning management system, you can download additional material relevant to your lesson. This material may include government source material, such as information about the federal government small business set-aside program, vendor registration and compliance material, and available government opportunities. Frequently, Government Contracting Academy will also provide amplifying information about a lesson topic in the form of a white paper, process, or business tool. And in some cases, example material will be provided so you have a better understanding how to create this material for your own company. I once had a mentor tell me to never recommend how people should organize their own information. He believes that every person's organizational system is a hot mess to somebody else. But for high achieving folks, like the people who are considering launching a company, the hot mess for these people, they're working and is working very well. So I would simply be the master of the obvious and recommend that you save these resources to your highly effective, extremely efficient, hot mess. Let's be honest. One of the best things about graduating from school is that a fear of pop quizzes no longer breaks us out in a cold sweat. I finished graduate school over a quarter century ago and I recently had a dream, actually it was a nightmare, that I was so unprepared for one of my tests that I thought I was in the wrong classroom. The optional quizzes in this program are not that type of quiz. These optional quizzes are a great way to review the material at the end of a lesson and to also identify material that you may not fully understand so you can go back to the applicable section of the lesson to obtain a better grasp of the material. We believe that these optional quizzes are so helpful we want to reward you for taking them. If you complete each end of lesson quiz, with an 80% or higher score, then you will obtain a Government Contracting Academy Certificate of Completion when you finish the program. And let me tell you, these are the hottest certificates going. In fact, recently a student framed their Government Contracting Academy Certificate on top of their Oxford PhD degree. <laughs> okay, maybe not. But seriously, I would definitely want to obtain credit for completing this course to show potential employers and partners that you have a solid understanding of the federal government contracting industry. Oh, and I always forgot to tell you that you get to take the quizzes as many times as you wish to obtain the 80% or greater score. Follow along activities are how you make this material real to you and your company. As we start the program, follow along activities will help you create your startup checklist to help you launch your company. As we go deeper into the program, your follow-on activities will help you create your corporate documents and ultimately your business growth strategy. I will go as far as saying this. If you complete every follow-along activity, then at the end of this program, you will have a fully legal, federal government compliant, and highly competitive small business with the potential to change your life forever. If you're reading between the lines, Following activities lay a trail of breadcrumbs that you can follow to entrepreneurial success. Finally, every two weeks, this program has a live question and answer event where you can ask questions, seek additional clarifications regarding a topic, and directly interact with a Government Contracting Academy mentor. This is somebody who has been in your shoes and knows what you're going through. Entrepreneurship is not easy, and as you launch and grow your company, it can get pretty lonely and quiet sitting in the corner office. Being able to ask somebody who understands your perspective regarding what may likely be your most important professional undertaking is absolutely priceless. Now let's talk about the program as a whole and what you will learn. More importantly, let's discuss how Government Contracting Academy can help you fulfill your dreams of entrepreneurship and financial success in the federal government contracting industry. In this course, you will learn about the tremendous advantages of the federal government contracting industry because if you know what the advantages are, then you can fully exploit them. You will learn how to launch a fully legal and compliant company with service offerings that will help you identify to meet your goals. You'll learn how to differentiate your company so you can stand out and above your competitive field. You'll learn how to perform massive outreach through our automation to market your company to thousands of industry executives for bid teaming agreements and subcontracts. You'll learn how to identify and competitively bid on contract opportunities. You'll learn how to develop bid win themes so you'll be playing chess while your competitors are playing checkers. You'll learn how to write competitive proposals and price them. 
you'll learn how to bid a 5% profit on a proposal while managing it to 30 plus percent profit margins. You'll learn how to transition and manage your contracts without blowing a ton of money on infrastructure costs. You'll learn how to lead, manage, and scale your company. And you'll learn how to avoid the startup landmines that many of your competitors will step on. Again, it's all about aligned perspectives. And Government Contracting Academy understands your perspective and what you need. So let's get started on this exciting entrepreneurial journey together. Although this is our first lesson, you still have follow-on activities. It's an easy one, though. I'll see you in the next lesson.